Friends, there's no delicate way to put this. Someone is stealing from you right now, literally taking money out of your pocket without you even realizing it. In fact, many food companies are trying to hide this fact from you through deceptive packaging that ranges from mildly misleading to outright lying directly to your face. And if all of us aren't careful, these methods are going to become permanent on grocery store shelves. But by recognizing them, and more importantly, raising awareness of them, we can stop the spread. So listen up, theorists. It's time to catch some thieves red-handed. Internet. Welcome to Food Theory, where today it's WOGO Day. Watch one, get one free. Watch this video about how the food on grocery store shelves are trying to cheat you out of your money, and then you get this free episode thrown in about how the grocery stores themselves are trying to cheat you out of money for no extra charge. In a world where everyone's trying to squeeze every last buck out of your wallet, some free online entertainment is pretty much the best deal that you're gonna get. So according to reports from March, inflation in the US is higher now than it's been at any point in the past 40 years. Like it or not, things are getting more expensive, and that sucks. But you know what sucks more? When the prices don't go up. Now, that might seem counterintuitive, but let me explain. You see, some companies in the food space have figured out a sneaky way to cash in without raising their prices. It's an insidious trick known as shrinkflation. A trick where you pay the same old price that you always have, but you end up getting a smaller product without ever realizing it. And it's the long-term effects of this that make it all the more dangerous. One of my favorite demonstrations of this came on late night TV back in 2007 when BJ Novak of The Office noticed that Cadbury eggs seemed to be getting smaller. I buy my Cadbury eggs this year. They feel smaller than they used to be. Something is up. I look through all the cabinets in my house. I find a Cadbury cream egg from a couple years ago and I brought it. This is this year's egg. Yes. This is the egg from oh, a couple wow. years ago. <laughs> That. Judge for yourself, America. So, there you have it. Smoking gun, clear as crystal. The eggs were getting smaller. But the most outlandish part of the whole story is that Cadbury actually tried to deny that this is what they were doing. You go to the main Cadbury website, it says on the front page, no, they have not gotten smaller, you've gotten bigger. They were literally gaslighting anyone who noticed the trend. It's not us, it's you, lol. That was a ballsy move there, Cadbury. Ballsy move. Of course, they knew they couldn't keep getting away with it after being publicly called out, so they changed their about page on the website from this archived version, why have the size of the eggs changed, it hasn't, you just grew up, to this, quote, since people's preferences vary from market to market, so do our products. Basically an explanation that amounts to, we made the eggs smaller and we thought we could get away with it by lying to you until we were called out on national TV. This, my friends, is shrinkflation. Products becoming smaller over time to give you less bang for your buck, all while keeping you in the dark about it. You might think that this is just a crazy one-off example, but it's happening everywhere. Case in point, this is what a Doritos bag looked like several years ago, and this is what it looks like in 2022. Notice anything different? No? Well, that's kind of the point, but if you zoom in and enhance, and enhance there down in the corner, the old bag has a net weight of 9 and 3 quarters ounces, or 276.4 grams. The new bag has a net weight of 9 and 1 quarter ounces, or 262 grams. That's a difference of around 5 chips per bag, and yet we're still paying the same price. Same cost, less product. Earlier this year, Frito-Lay was actually confronted about it, and they explained by saying, quote, inflation's hitting everyone. We took a little bit out of the bag so we can give you the same price and you can keep enjoying your chips. Wow, thanks there, Frito-Lay. Really doing us a solid by giving us less chips for the same price. Now, their explanation on the surface would seem to make sense. In the US, inflation levels are now at a record high, climbing above 8% in the past few months, higher than they've been at any point in my lifetime. Everything is getting more expensive, and that's gonna affect everyone, including including the food manufacturers. If Doritos is paying more for the ingredients that go into the chips, then they have two options. They can charge more money for the same product, or they can charge the same amount of money for less product. It seems like a fair position for them to take, but there's something that's a bit more insidious going on because most of us aren't actually consciously choosing to pay the same amount we've been paying to get less food. Chances are you've probably purchased products like this without realizing that you were getting less for your dollar. After all, are you really gonna be able to tell the difference if the Doritos 
Doritos bag has five fewer chips in it? No, of course not. And that's by design. That's the whole point. And that's not just me saying that, it's actually coming from a research paper from Harvard Business School. Consumers are more sensitive to changes in price than they are to changes in size. Tell us that a food product's getting 10% more expensive and we might reconsider whether that bag of chips or box of cereal is really worth it. But if you keep the price the same and reduce the amount of food we're getting, people are just likely keep on buying the same thing because no one truly notices the difference. For example, take this Reddit post from last year that shows two orange juice bottles that appear to be identical. But wait, zoom in and you see that the one on the left is 1.75 liters and the one on the right is 1.53. The bottle actually got 12% smaller while looking almost identical. And the truth is, most of us won't notice that at the breakfast table. After all, if you're pouring yourself a 12 ounce glass of OJ every morning, are you really gonna notice that you're only getting six and a half glasses when you used to get seven? No, they change it just enough not to trigger your suspicion. And now you're paying the same dollar amount per bottle, but that bottle's gonna have to be replaced more often, costing you more in the long run. Unfortunately, we don't always get a handy side-by-side -side comparison. And sometimes, even looking at two products on the shelf isn't gonna tell you the full story. Years back, Skippy managed to change the amount of peanut butter that you were getting in a jar, while making the jars appear to be the same size. They kept the same width and the same height, but they put an indentation in the bottom. Then, after we had gotten used to that, they then deepened that indentation further. No matter how sharp your eyes may be, it's pretty darn tough to keep up with the shrinkflation meta. It's the kind of thing that seems invisible, and what's the big deal with a couple ounces here and there, but giving you 12% less liquid in the bottle is the equivalent of charging you 13.6% more for the same product. Something that will definitely affect your grocery bill for the month. If they had actually raised the price, then you would have noticed, and you might have decided to buy a different product instead. But with shrinkflation, food companies are able to blind us to the reality that things are getting more expensive. So, how do you avoid falling victim to all this? For one thing, be on the lookout anytime the shape of the packaging changes. For example, take a look at these two boxes of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's almost as if they tried to hide the fact that the box on the right is smaller by making it slightly taller. But if we pay attention to what really matters, the numbers, we can actually see that the box on the right only has 532 grams of cereal compared to the other box with 547. Sometimes companies will try to disguise the change by labeling the new packaging as new look, but that's usually just disguising the shrunken size with marketing hype. Luckily, grocery stores usually offer a useful tool, the price tag. When you're looking at a price tag, it's tempting to focus on the big number that you see up front, the one that says that you're paying $2.99 for a jar or $5.48 for a box, but ignore that. Instead, focus on the amount that you're paying per ounce or per unit. For one thing, that's going to help you find the better deals by buying the container that's cheapest per ounce. But more importantly, you'll start to notice when that number starts to creep upward, even when the big number displaying the price of the item seems to stay the same. But you know what? Even that isn't enough sometimes. Take this example from astute Reddit user, has anyone seen my mom, who discovered that Aldi's Tikka Masala Simmer Sauce has actually been watering down their product, to the point where a fourth cup serving now contains 50 calories of food instead of the usual 60. On the surface, it looks like the portion size has gone up. Now it's 70 grams instead of 60 grams, but the jar has gone from seven servings per container to six. How's that for confusing labeling? I mean, that right there is the reason I tend not to use serving sizes when crunching the numbers for the show, just like we talked about last week. So if you crunch the numbers out, the jar on the left is giving you around seven servings at 60 calories or 420 calories worth of food, while the jar on the right is giving you six servings at 50 calories or 300 calories worth of food. A whopping 29% less food, despite the fact that the jar actually looks taller due to all the water that they just added. And we know for a fact that they're watering it down. You can tell that they just added water because the ingredients list has to list them in order of quantity. And the jar on the left lists tomato as the first ingredient, while the jar on the right lists water as first, ahead of tomato, for what was supposed to be the same product. But hey, who's actually gonna go and read the fine print, right? Business practices like these are why consumer watchdog groups are so important. One of my favorites is mouseprint.org, which is full of all kinds of examples showing how sun-made raisins, which used to be 22.5 ounces in a container, now gives you 20 ounces of dried fruit. How bars of soap have gotten 20% smaller. The best, though, are the toilet paper examples, which is like doing algebra on steroids. One mega roll equals four regular rolls, and each of those regular rolls is two ply, so how much toilet paper are you really getting? Well, doesn't matter. Any way you slice it, it's less across the board. We're going from 264 sheets to 244. It's enough to overwhelm you. And you see, that's the point. The other point, though, is that the sizes never go back up. It'd be one thing to shrink products in order to reduce costs during times when expenses are high, like now when the food industry is still recovering from production shortages, but the problem is they never bounce back. There is never 
ever a return to normalcy. I mean, why would there be? If you have no problem paying the same amount for less product and you don't notice it, why should they suddenly make the sizes bigger again? Instead, they stay small. They settle into a new normal before, hey, you know what? It's time to shrink again. Take, for instance, the toilet paper example that I just talked about. Consumer Reports has been tracking the information on toilet paper brands since 2009, only to find that the sheets have been getting smaller and smaller, while the rolls have been getting shorter and shorter, reducing the amount of paper that you're getting by over 20%. Again, you are getting 20% less product than what you were paying for a few years prior, and there is nothing that you can do to stop it. Or is there? You see, the answer is to not let them get away with it. When you see packaging getting smaller to hide the fact that the products are getting more expensive, call companies out on social media. At a minimum, you'll be informing your fellow consumers, and if companies actually start to face significant backlash for it, it'll force them to start being more honest in their business practices. Public shaming has been proven to work when it comes to shrinkflation. Mondelez is the owner of Toblerone, and back in 2014, they reduced the weight of their bars by 25%. Literally a fourth of the product disappeared by adding more space between each piece. But then the public started to call them out on it, and they reversed the decision two years later. So it can be done. That, my friends, is why this is one of those instances when hashtag activism can actually make a difference. The reason companies have gotten away with this for so long is that we've been in the dark about what's really happening. But now there are whole subreddits dedicated to tracking these sorts of product changes. So stay informed, share that information with others, and call out the businesses that you see doing this with their shiny new packaging. If not, the products aren't going to be the only thing shrinking. Your wallet will as well. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.